Hello. Today, we're going to be running through my pour over setup and kind of in stark contrast to last year, where I think that the espresso setup was really the star of the show this year. And especially for the last few months, this setup is what I've been using on a daily basis. I have a ton of equipment and a lot of people always ask, what do you use every single day to make your coffee? This has pretty much been the answer and that might rub some people the wrong way, but when it comes to exploring coffees and trying new things, I still think that pour over a simple setup like this is the best way to do that. You can grab everything on this table for well under a thousand dollars and create amazing quality coffee. So in terms of bang for your buck, I think that everything on the table here is a good example of that maybe except for the kettle. However, I'll have everything on this table linked down in the description below, of course, if you want to check it out. So let's jump right in. Let's start off with probably the most important part of any setup, the grinder. This is the Easy Presso K Max. I just released a review on it. If you want all the details, I highly recommend checking that out. But essentially, this in my opinion is one of the cheapest ways to get spectacular coffee at home. In terms of the hand grinder market, it's coming in kind of at a mid to high price point, but definitely not the highest, not as high as something like a Commandante, but the grind quality and the build quality are absolutely there. I absolutely love using this on a daily basis. It is amazingly well built and it produces spectacular coffee. Just listen to these grind steps. It is so satisfying to use. I love this thing. However, last week we just released a video on the new fellow Ode Gen 2. If you want to see that video, it is also linked up here. And that has sort of thrown a bit of a wrench, I'd say, into these plans because that is an amazingly good value to price point grinder. I still think that with the base burr set, the Easy Presso is producing cups that I enjoy more. However, if you want an electric grinder, that is probably the one that would be sitting on this table right now. All right, moving on from grinders, the scale I am using is the Akaya Pearl, and this is the newest version. And a lot of people look at Akaya scales and say that they are exorbitantly expensive, and that is true, especially in their espresso models like the Lunar and the Pixie, Pixie, Pixis. However, in the case of the Pearl, I don't necessarily think that is too much the case. You are definitely paying for the brand name a little bit, but in terms of what it offers, in terms of the build quality, the fact that it recharges by USB-C, the fact that it has some really cool flow rate measurements built straight into the display on this newest version, I don't think it is that much of a splurge compared to other brew scales that are out there. So if you want to get an Akaya scale and you drink mostly pour over, I say go for the Pearl. It actually is a pretty darn good scale for the money. However, if you're looking for a scale for anything other than pour over, this is absolutely too large. Um, definitely not an espresso scale. All right, moving on. This is the carafe I'm using. This is a carafe by Fellow. Full disclosure, they sent this one to me and that is why I'm using it. I think carafes are pretty straightforward. None is really exceptionally better than the other. This is the one that I'm using. The reason I use a carafe is to cool down my drinks before putting them in my cup. You can of course brew straight into a cup, but in this way you can swirl it around, give it a nice long pour and decrease that temperature closer to drinking temperature so you can drink your coffee faster. All right, now before we get to the good stuff, which is the dripper itself, I have two really, really important things to talk about that are probably equal, if not way larger contributors than any of this equipment to the quality of the cups I've been making. The first of which, and people hate talking about this, but it is coffee water. The water you use makes a huge, huge difference. For pour over, the mineral mix that I have been using is perfect coffee water. This is not sponsored in any way. This is just the one that I prefer for pour overs. The other big name is third wave water. I will absolutely use these interchangeably if I'm running out of one or I'm running out of the other. However, I find that the perfect cough water gives a little bit more sweetness, whereas a third wave water has a bit more of those acidic notes that can get a little bit off putting at times to me. They are very similar, but that would be my very, very quick breakdown. A video on these is definitely to come. But regardless, 
Both of these are miles better than any tap water or filtered water, and it makes a huge difference in these cups. Other than water, obviously the other biggest component is the coffee itself. Finding good quality coffee, finding which coffee you enjoy is hugely, hugely important. And something that has really helped me with that recently is exploring tiny little batches of different types of coffee. Now, this is not sponsored. 19 grams sent me this advent calendar of 24, 25 different coffees. And I have been enjoying this so, so much with this setup every single morning. Using pour over is great because you don't have to dial it in every single time and waste coffee like you would on espresso. You can brew it up and you're generally in the right ballpark. But in terms of learning about coffee and learning what I enjoy, which different types, which processing methods, this has been hugely educational and I am really, really enjoying it. So if you guys want to check this out, there is a discount code for getting 10% off. I will also have this linked down below. Again, this is not sponsored. I didn't even have to share this in a YouTube video, but I have been enjoying it that much. If you don't want to buy this particular one, I think lots of other roasteries do advent calendars like Onyx. I think Monogram in Canada do an advent calendar. So definitely check it out. It's a great way to learn about coffee. Let's move on to the last pieces of gear. Other than the grinder, probably the biggest change to this setup has been the dripper. I have moved to the Fellow Stag X purely because it is a flat bottom dripper and I really like this form factor. I find that flat bottom drippers are way easier to get consistent results with and to get higher extractions. I've decided to go with the Stag X because I really like its build quality, I like its look, I like its form factor, and I really, really like the coffee that it brews. Some of my favorite parts about this are that it is actually dual wall, it retains a good amount of heat, it even comes with this lid that I'm not sure if you're supposed to do this, but you can put it over top to contain even more heat. I generally don't do that, but it's a possibility. And then this lid acts as a dosing cup, it can act as a drip cup, and it fits on perfectly where you push it, and it actually attaches on there. So I think it's just a really nicely designed setup, and that is why I use this. There are other really good flat bottom drippers out there like the Aurea. Um, I just highly recommend you check out a flat bottom if you're currently a V60 brewer and you've never explored this type of thing. One big element that stopped me from doing this until this year was the filters. Um, fellow Stells filters, they're a bit on the more expensive side. However, I realized that you can absolutely find cheaper options like these ones from Kalita and that kind of lowers the activation energy of getting into a flat bottom brewer. And once again, the cups that I'm getting out of this, I think are highly, highly worth making that switch if you're someone who brews on something like a V60. That's my personal opinion, but if you haven't tried one before, give it a shot. All right. Last two pieces of equipment, probably the worst bang for buck, if I'm completely honest, is the Fellow Stag EKG Kettle. They just released their newer versions. Um, unless they send me one, I'm probably not gonna upgrade. I would love to have wooden handles and a wooden lid on this. But that's purely superficial. This kettle is great. This kettle is iconic. Uh, people instantly recognize it, but you can absolutely get a kettle that performs exactly the same at a lower price point. So definitely keep that in mind. If you want the iconic look, I don't think you can really beat the Stag EKG. The last thing, and this is where I need your help, is with cups. I am still using this cup by Denby. These are beautiful. I love the look of these. I literally own one of these cups. The other cups I use are just plain white porcelain cups. I have lots of fun espresso cups. I have lots of fun cappuccino and latte cups. I don't have fun mugs. So if you guys have a mug that you guys really enjoy, a manufacturer or even a specific model, leave it linked down in the description below. I need suggestions. So that has been my pour over setup. This is the setup that I use currently right now. This will probably change, but this is the setup that I use most days at home. I am admittedly on a bit of a pour over kick. When I switch back to espresso, we will go over that setup as well. That video is coming in the next few months. So. I guess I'll see you in 2023. Place your bets now on which of these items will still be here and which of these items will change. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.